Hello, and welcome to this rather special multi-part session on how to be a great GM, and in particular, how to use music in your sessions. Now, a lot of you have asked for this in the past, and I haven't been able to give it to you because of copyright issues. I have, now, however, managed through the work of our marketing goblin, managed to make an alliance with a company by the name of www.battlebards.com. If you haven't heard about them before, go and check them out. They create some wonderful music, as well as a whole range of other stuff that you can use in your game to really enhance it. But I want to talk about music particularly, and in this session, I would ask that you listen with headphones on if you are not already doing so. And the reason is, today you are going to be participating in this particular session. So, when we look at the role of music in our games, what do we use music for? What can we use it for? Well, quite simply, there are three things that music can contribute to our gaming environment. One, it certainly helps with the setting. Two, it helps in terms of the tone. And three, it helps with pacing. And it's with pacing that music can be really, really powerful and get you those top marks to becoming the ultimate great GM. How does music do all of that? And how do you choose the right music? How do you know which music is appropriate? Well, that's what we're going to be covering in these next couple of sessions. But before we start really looking into all of it, I want to play you this particular piece of music. Now, the picture is going to go black because I want you to close your eyes and listen to this piece of music. And when it's done, I will give you 10 seconds or so of absolute silence. During that period, I want you to list as many things as you can in terms of what the music has evoked. I want you to tell me, where are we? Where does the music place you? What do you think of when you hear this piece of music? What emotion does the music bring out in you? And you might very well have a no answer to some of those questions. You might also have a I don't know answer to some of those questions. But for the ones in terms of where does it place us, what's the setting that this music evokes, you should definitely have an answer. So let's listen to the first piece of music. I now want you to listen to this piece of music and tell me exactly the same answers as before, but does the music make you feel any different?
Let's look at why the music is evoking or not evoking, why it is giving you some sense of emotion or not a sense of emotion. To understand music, we first need to look at music and say, well, why do we like the type of music that we like and why do we hate the type of music that we hate? And it all has to do, of course, with your wonderful little brain and the type of music that you were exposed to as a youngster and the type of music that you were exposed to during emotional periods in your life. So if you were a five-year-old and you were particularly distraught and someone was playing a piece of music on the radio or on the uh, iPod or whatever it is that you had when you were growing up in my day, it was a record player. But for those of you born in the 21st century, whatever it was played on, the emotion that you have will usually be associated with the music. So if you're having a negative emotion and you listen to country and western, you probably will grow up not being particularly fond of country and western. It's more about the emotions that we associate with music as to why we like it or don't like it than anything else. Another very good question to ask yourself is that the music you listen to, why do you like it? A lot of people don't actually know. They just say, well, I like that, but I don't like that. Interestingly enough, a lot of people dismiss classical music or um, film soundtracks based on the fact that they just don't like it. And there's a very interesting reason for it. And I have spent many, many decades lecturing people on the fundamentals of music, particularly classical music and film music principally. And what is interesting about it is that most classical music and film music to a large degree, but it does it slightly differently, is constructed in a very mathematically technical way. So unless you are used to listening to the very complicated sounds that make up classical music, your brain is simply going to get overloaded and say this is just a noisy mess. Whereas contemporary music is a lot simpler in its structure. Not all of it, I do understand, and yes, heavy metal and death metal and grunge metal and growler metal and folk metal is very similar to classical music. But a lot of that is lost underneath the growling and screaming of the uh, lead performer. So when we look at classical music, though, classical music is the origin of emotive music. Interestingly enough, they tried to purge it during a particular period in classical music's history, but then the Romantics came in, and as the name implies, the Romantic period of classical music is where they were trying to evoke emotions from us. So they spent nearly a hundred years trying to work out how we as humans respond to sound emotionally. This was then taken and given the ultimate expression in that wonderful form of music called opera. Don't worry, I'm not going to uh, give you any opera to listen to because I do know that that certainly requires a very trained ear and there's a lot of opera that I don't listen to because it is just screeching. Having said that though, opera was designed to evoke an emotional response from the audience using music. That was then translated into the early film scores when we were starting to add music to feature film. Bear in mind, music was added first before dialogue was added. That's how powerful music actually is, is that it was deemed to be more important than actually having someone speak on film. And so important, as a matter of fact, that a lot of the early day cinemas actually had a piano player playing the music live in the actual cinema whilst the film was running. Talk about a repeat job. Anyway, so film music has been this journey of eliciting emotional responses from the audience. The next time you watch a horror movie, turn off the sound. It very, 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 very most likely will no longer be horrific. The sound, and particularly the music, is what gives us those cues that something terrifying is about to happen. And then, of course, it goes silent, and then the thing happens with a gigantic musical score. So when we start to build our library of music that we're going to be using to influence our players, we need to be cognizant of the fact that certain types of music was written specifically to evoke emotional response. And if you look at contemporary songs where there are lyrics involved, usually the lyrics give you a guide as to what the person was feeling. But again, a lot of contemporary stuff is either happy, bubbly, cheery, sad, depressed, morose, or whatever the case might be, but it uses the lyrics to convey that. Film music, we avoid lyrics completely because they get in the way of the dialogue of the characters. And it is exactly the same as in a D&D or in a gaming session. You don't want the lyrics 
of a particular piece of song to get in the way of you talking to your players and their characters' responses. So our best source of inspirational music, of tonal music, of music that's going to evoke emotion is from soundtracks. But how do we choose them? Well, listen to this piece from BattleBards.com. Did you feel some kind of emotion? Did you get some kind of response? In the next session, when I come back to you, we're going to be looking at how you now use this emotional music to really up your game. Because simply having it playing in the background is, yes, a major help, but it doesn't actually push your game to the next level. So, until we come back, we're going to play out with another piece of music, listen to it, and tell me if you think that this piece of music is going to help you to make the most epic speech of your game mastering career when we come back in the next session. Until next time, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of this, and please leave your comments below so that we can judge whether this is something that you really are interested in or whether we should act like an opera and exit stage left. Anyway, until next time, happy gaming.